Continuing our never-ending quest to give you new and interesting things to do with your CNC, be it Nomad or Shapeoko, let me introduce you to the combination of Rub and Buff, MC Etcher, our diamond tip drag engravers, along with glass and ceramic tiles. Now I know your first question, what is Rub and Buff? Rub and Buff is a combination of carnauba waxes, fine metallic powders, and pigments. It can be used on plastics, metals, leather, fabrics, woods, and more. There's a whole subgenre of Nerf gun creations and body armor by prop makers and cosplayers, 3D prints, and rub and buff, an excellent combination. For the purposes of this project, I went with the sample sizes. This is more than enough for a number of projects. There are a variety of golds, there's black, there's silver, there's bronze. You have some color options. While it's a unique product, it is not an expensive product. It's available on Amazon as well as your local craft stores. I'll put some links in the description. You can check it out. For this project, you're going to want to go with the more aggressive 90 degree MC Etcher bit. Now I know your second question, how quickly are these MC Etcher diamond tip drag engravers going to wear out when they're used on ceramic and glass tile? I can't change the laws of physics. The answer is much more quickly than if you're using them on acrylic or just on basic metal. Fact of the matter is, tools wear out. They're designed to be used. The size and complexity of your design is going to determine your overall tool life. But before you get too bogged down in that, let me show you the amazing results you can have from this simple process. And then I have a surprise reversal. We're gonna switch around the order of things and allow you to use a partially worn diamond tip drag engraver for a whole lot more. Let's dive in. Basic big box store tiles are what we're talking about here. Anywhere from 40 cents up to about $4. And honestly, most of them are close to a buck. This is cheap fun. Let's start you out with the process. In this case, I cut a pocket so I knew the location of the tiles. You don't have to do this, it just helps me square it up. You cut right into a corner, that way you can jam the tile in there and you know exactly where it is. Go ahead and zero off your machine to whichever tile you're gonna use if you're gonna cut several across different designs and different tile sizes, and you have that same XY point. Then you run a simple drag engrave. Just like drag engraving anything else, this is a spin-free process. You're just gonna drag the bit across the surface. With whatever tile you're using, go ahead and test the rub and buff first. With a glass tile or a glossy ceramic finish tile, you're gonna be able to wipe that rub and buff off and have it stick in the grooves that you've made with MC Etcher. In a lot of other cases, when you get that matte finish, you're just gonna end up with a solid color. You're not gonna be able to wipe that rub and buff off, but that's gonna be part of our second chance opportunity for our worn out MC Etchers. Getting the rub and buff to stick in just the right way on these tiles is definitely a challenge. It's gonna have a little bit of street art value to it because the ceramic coating is not 100% uniform. So the engraving is not gonna be 100% uniform and therefore your rub and buff and where it remains is not gonna be uniform either. The variation gives it an authenticity that to me is appealing. Now I know your third question is, how do I know when my diamond tip drag engraver is suffering some wear? You start to get results like this. Very subtle lines that do not hold the rub and buff. When you go back with a little bit of alcohol to thin it out, it just pulls all the rub and buff right out of there and it's gone. So you'll start to see that. It's more obvious here on this design, the Hermosa Beach logo. It really started to go away in a, in a big way. Here's where continuing down the process of creativity and experimentation can really pay off. I showed you this tile earlier. That's all rub and buff. And I thought with a worn out bit, could you just go ahead and take the rub and buff off or alter that surface to create something? Answer, yes you can. And this also looks incredibly interesting. This might even be better than the initial results. You'll have to be the judge of that but this is wonderfully engraved. It doesn't wipe off. You could probably clear coat it and you could do this almost ad nauseum. Doesn't really matter how worn out the bit is. It just has to pull the rub and buff off the surface and alter it. I really think this has somewhere to go. You'll notice the difference in uniformity between these two here. You get that street art look on the one, but when you do it in reverse with the rub and buff, that is a very consistent look. So you can decide which look you want. This requires a very sharp MC etcher. This does not options for you, the artist. I was so excited by that secondary process, I decided to do a little bit more experimentation. This involved me putting on rub and buff, the clear coat first, then drag engraving. This I didn't like as much, 
but it didn't come out horribly. I would stick with rub and buff engrave clear coat. You're gonna have to continue the experimentation process at home. Clean, quiet, quick fun on your Shapeoko or Nomad. That's what this process offers you. Rub and buff, diamond tip drag engravers, along with glass and ceramic tiles. Go ahead, try it out. If you wanna sell these, throw them in a wood frame. I think you can make some pretty good money with them. You can tell me in the comments below. More ideas, information, and inspiration coming from Carbide 3D.